right, so haven't really gotten to drive the Yukon a whole lot. Um, been on vacation, just taking time off from school and stuff. Um, so gonna go back and do some mass airflow sensor tuning. I've been making a bunch of changes to, you know, testing the throttle cracker and the follower and um, just various things, some stuff that I'll be able to go over, but um, the truck's kind of been down. We had to go back and put a different, uh, had to pull the transmission pan back off and put a new gasket in it. Um, so haven't really had a chance to drive it very much. Haven't really needed to. So we're just gonna do some data logging. And um, I'm actually going back to one of the ways that the nice tuning courses tells you how to do it, which is where you, you uh, disable the deceleration fuel cutoff as well as the, um, um, as well as you raise all the power enrichment stuff. So we're gonna do that and Amazing just kind of see, see how if, Joe Rogan podcast on right now. So we're just gonna kind of see how that goes. So I'm um, gonna see just what it does uh, and we'll go over the file and um, just kind of go from there. So long-term fuel trims are turned off, so, but we're gonna use the long-term and short-term math um, to do the calculations. So yeah, here we go. did make the high and low octane tables um, the same when you're doing this stuff you do want to do that uh, but also want to not also want to log the knock learn factor just to see um, just that way you're getting consistent spark so now we're gonna do some uh, we're gonna do some VE logging. Go ahead and start logging now. So yeah, so we're just gonna do some driving around and just go from there. So this stuff's pretty easy. It's not very difficult. Um, so, but definitely done a bunch where I've. Uh, definitely done it a bunch where I've uh, left you know the fuel desail cut off and stuff on and some off and you can tell that I've got the mass airflow sensor fail because I've got the check engine line on the dash so Okay, so ran, ran the truck a good bit last night in uh, in speed density and uh, come to find out that we had some lean spots and we were getting some knock and some things and so had to had to make some somewhat significant changes uh, to the table um, in order to calm down the uh, the lean spots. Uh, also at idle, it was like kind of rich. The table was just kind of kind of weird. So. Gonna go ahead and flash this file, do another log. Um, still have the D cell fuel cut off, turned off, as well as the uh, power enrichment is disabled a pretty good bit. So um, you don't want to lean on it too hard, um, you know. But you are trying to build a decent VE table, so. Um, Okay, so we just got done doing a log, and this actually looks much better. Um, so we almost got up to 100 kPa. So it definitely uh, uh, it was a lot more rich this time. We kept it below about 3,500 RPM. Um, yeah, the spark really wasn't any knock or anything. It was very minimal that time. Um, let's see. What else? Yeah, this looks pretty good actually. Lots of green. 
Um, so I think what I'm actually going to do... Let's look at where it's idling at. All right, so we're actually just gonna take this closed loop error uh, table, graph rather, and we're just going to copy this, and then we're gonna go into our tune file, this is number 35, I've been doing a bunch. So one of the things that I've kind of reconsidered in terms of how I copy and paste this data is the idea of the paste special function multiply or multiply by half if you've done it you know a couple of times already and you're not trying to overshoot it um you know as opposed to taking the percentage you know uh and entering it in that way and then interpolating up and down and left and right um that's a lot of people i think say that that will um that will create a smooth it's easier to create a smoother curve versus when you paste the data like i just did um it kind of puts this weird you know chop into the table uh like it puts these big divots and everything and so one of the things that i've found that you have to do is you have to go and do like a um you have to go and do like a uh a vertical interpolation on the entire row um so we're gonna try that actually Mm. I don't want to do this. I'm kind of debating on how to. We're gonna do another log. I just kind of want to see what what it does. A lot of people will tell you to not use the smooth uh, function, like to take the entire table and smooth it. Um, I've done that a little bit in the past. I think what I'm gonna do. Let's just do a little bit of vertical interpolation in a couple of these spots. And just maybe not grab too much data. This data should be pretty, should be pretty good because all of the transients and stuff are clicked off. So, it's somewhat better than let's come down here. So the VE table doesn't look terrible. Of course, there's a chunk of this VE table that I haven't done like an open loop or anything or with a wide band. So there's a portion of it that you're just not gonna get to. Um, so that's just something to consider. Um, what else? What else was I doing? Um, we're definitely idling a little on the high side. So, got 18 degrees there. Hmm. Hmm, hmm, hmm just kind of going through the log right now just trying to see knock learn factor is not kicking in at all which I don't think it really matters just because I've copy and pasted the tables but like at idle I think what we're gonna do we've got a decent amount of spark in there I think what we're gonna do is just take maybe Well, actually, I think we're just gonna roll with it like it is to get these trims a little more in line. Um, we'll do that first, and then we'll check the idle. Um, so if the fueling's not right, then that's definitely gonna change things. So we'll flash this, and we'll do another drive, and we'll just kinda go from there. All right, well, I will tell you one thing that tuning the VE table is probably the most time consuming thing. So if you have a mass airflow sensor, tune that first, okay? Uh, so we're about on our last revision of the VE table. We're getting the trims lined out. The only thing I would caution you about is uh, be careful with how much uh, interpolation you do. I know that we want the VE table to look pretty, 
but ultimately, you know, the trims that it likes is what it likes, you know, for your combination. So just keep that in mind. Um, doing our last little log, we'll do one last more little paste and we'll transfer over to the mass airflow sensor. That'll probably get done in one drive and that'll be that. So see you on the next one. Okay, so just a little bit of bonus material that I wanna go over uh, and show you kind of one of the things that um, I kind of figured out while I was doing uh, the speed density tuning, which it took me several files uh, to do so. I'll be honest with you, the mass airflow sensor, um, that only took me one, um, basically one drive. Um, you know, I got that dialed in a pretty good while ago, but since then, uh, I don't know if I went back and did it after I did the ported throttle body um, and maybe not the cold air intake, but you can see here the math closed loop error. Uh, if we go to our graphs layout, that is utilizing the short and long-term fuel trim math. Even though long-term fuel trims are turned off, that's just what we're using. Um, and you can see here through the drive cycle, uh, you know, 0 0.9, 0 0.31, 1 1.1, 1 .1, um, very, very small numbers, you know, so I'm really not too concerned with that. So what I would do in this instance is I would probably highlight this area, which is 3125 up to 6875, and I would probably do a multiply by half. So not too much, um, but something to consider um, in the, uh, VE area is, we go to general, we go to primary VE. So this is kind of where it was at after the last, um, you know, log deal. Okay. And you can see it's got some jagged, uh, edges here. Um, so the only thing is that when you do this, Say you copy and paste a you know data in here, and you've got you know like this this chunk right here has data all inside of it. When you go to do your interpolation, you need to do it from the outside corners only. So if 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 this is the area that has data, you don't want to take this area and then hit smooth, or you know take this whole row and do a vertical interpolation because it's going to skew all of this data. So if all this data changes when you do your copy and paste by half or copy and paste full, you're essentially just undoing it in the opposite direction of what you did. Okay. So in this instance, what I would probably do, uh, and I'm not too worried about how this VE table really looks, um, especially in the high load areas, because we run this in the blended mode. So if so, is this like super pretty? Eh. I mean, it's okay, but like the driving portions, you know, um, I'm just not really all that concerned with everything else. I can see here where there's some uh, discrepancies, and so what I might do is maybe just come. Let me just come down here. I can see where this is like a little wonky. Maybe come down here, do something like this. There again, you're really not gonna be in this region a whole lot. Um, maybe something like that. Um, and then up here, some kind of weird stuff. Maybe we'll do, there again, like if I'm planning that maybe this was where I was driving, I started at this cell right here I went up and then I hit my interpolation button. So again, if we pretend that like this is the, you know, spots that we were hitting, um, let's see here. You can see here where it's a little uneven. So what I might do is grab from like right here. That's probably a data point that changed recently and just come up here and just do a little bit of that. Again, very, very small stuff you know we're not trying to you know do anything um if we go over here you know that's probably probably going to be okay again we're just wanting to make really small changes and so what i might do with something like this is i might go out this whole like oh, these 29s up here that's kind of weird but there again probably not going to be there a whole lot um you know so Probably put that in. What I will do right now though, is I'll go back to this math log and I'll grab this data because I did, um, I did, um, 
Let's see, copy. And we'll just shift over. I did put it in math only mode. So we'll go over here and that is at 3125, copy. Go over here, the math frequency, 3125. And we're just gonna go paste by half. So we wanna make just some little baby steps. And I can see that it didn't, it didn't do anything weird um, in the curve. So I'll do a little bit of interpolation, nothing crazy. Like here you got a 103 to a 114 to a 123. You could consider that maybe a big, a big step. So, and yeah, maybe so. What you're really looking for, yeah. Again, you just want smooth transitions. You know, you definitely, I've, and I've learned this, you definitely don't want to just like hit the smooth button, you know, and just like smooth the whole table. Um, maybe if you were working with some, something that was like, um, you know, really gnarly, then you might need to consider that. But for now, that's what we, uh, that's going to conclude the fuel trim stuff. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to open a file. Uh, let's go back here to where I know that the, um, I know what the power enrichment settings were. So we'll go back in here. We'll set this back to zero. Not zero, but we're, we're making the differences zero. So that we're essentially turning power enrichment back on at a, um, so that we can use it. And then what else? Let's see, decel fuel cutoff, put that back at 104. So we'll zero that out. That way it puts it back at the 104 that we were at. And then that should be it. Long-term fuel trims are off. Let's see. I think that should be it. So now we're ready to go back out and um, ready to go back out and uh, make some hits. So yeah, that'll be that. And uh, see you in the next one.